Welcome everyone to our morning session of the Principia Symposium. This morning, our, it, is, it is a pleasure for me to introduce Desio Krause, such a nice friend and my supervisor. Uh, he will speak about the role of metamathematics in models and modeling. Desio is professor here in the Federal University of Santa Catarina and also in the graduate program in logic and metaphysics at the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. So, Desio, please. Okay, thank you, Jonas. Thank you for the welcome, so kind. And thank you for the organizers for the kind invitation. And I will try to speak a little bit about the role of metamathematics in the process of models and modeling. Uh, okay, let's go to the first slide. Yes, I will use the word model here in two senses. There are many senses of the word model, model uh, as you know, but I use in two senses. First, the model as a structure that satisfies the postulates of a given theory, which I call the logical model. And two, in the sense of modeling, that is the mathematization of some target domain, which I call the mathematical model. Then, for instance, Maxwell equations, according to me, constitute a mathematical model for electromagnetism, while the symmetries of an Euclidean, uh, an Euclidean triangle form a logical model for the axioms of groups. And so as the class VK, where K is an accessible, kappa is an accessible cardinal, is a logical model for the Zernago Franklin with the axiom of choice. That is, mathematical models, in whatever sense, presuppose a previous, uh, the mathematical models, only you are mathematizing or modeling a certain domain of knowledge, presupposes uh, an intended interpretation. So in Hubert's sense, perhaps you could call them a concrete axiomatics. But a, a logical model is generally given after the postulates of a theory being given. Then these are the differences I would like to enlighten. The elaboration of a model in whatever case it presupposes a mathematics. It's a metamathematical activity. But then there's the question: what's the importance of the metamathematics in the elaboration of models? I shall consider here, just for uh, brief, set theoretical structures only, which are more common in the philosophical discussion. Then I pose the questions: what where are living the models of a theory? Then, okay, the received view, you know very well, modeled the theories by means of a correspondence rules, providing a, so to say, an informal semantics. The semantic approach, advanced by Sutris, Van Frassen, Gier, and so on, used instead set theoretical structure as models of the postulates of the theory. But, uh, I will see below, uh, maybe they use also partial structures in uh, contemporary approach. By the way, the, content, the structuralist approach by Snead, Bowser, Molinas, and so on, also made the use of certain set theory, but they don't specify which one. So as the structural view by Leidman, French, and several other people, uses also partial structure, but none of them mentioned the framework where they are working in. In any case, the models live in a set theory, or in a set theory's model, or in a model of a set theory. That's the, the, uh, some facts. Mm -hmm. Okay, then all of this is made using uh, certain mathematical devices. The mathematical structures, let us acknowledge, are sets in some set theory. No discussion about what happens if the set theory used in the metamathematics needs some special characteristics depending on the theory. That is, I mean, the certain theory you are trying to uh, approach by using of a model, then it may require from the metamathematics some specific traits. And we should look for the mathematics uh, why, uh, uh, about the needs of the modeling. Then the, the first question is, what's a model? Then the first, the first uh, we can answer in this sense, in the sense of philosophy, philosophy of science. Can you use a task's conception of a model even for empirical theory? The strategy goes as follows. Take a language L, generally a first order language, write the axioms of T, the theory in that language, find the set theoretical structures that satisfy the axioms, 
in general, no specification for the particular set theory being used. And these are the, stru these structures are the models of this. Then you are found the class, the proper class, of course, models of T. And scientists, semanticists, of course, identify T with the class of its models. Okay, but there is some challenges to put here. For instance, Howerson puts that if T is identified as the class of its models, then a theory will be a class of models of what? Of a theory. You need to have the theory before. That is, the conjunction of the, the and the theory can be seen as the conjunction of the postulates, that is, a set theoretical predicates in the sense of soups. But the models of most scientific theories are not first order structure. This is the challenge for Tarski's approach. I will give you some examples. Tarski, in general, deals with the first order structures where you have a domain and relations and function over the objects of the domain. But you take, for instance, topological spaces, T, X, and Tau, where X is a set and Tau is a collection, is not a, a relation between elements of X, but uh, 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 is a relation, is a collection of subsets, that is the open sets of the topology. So as well all the orders, where we need to postulate that every non-empty set that this is not a first-order sentence and the structures are not first-order structures. The same things for empirical science. For instance, classical particle mechanics and axiomatization given by McKinsey, Sugar, and Sutras, for instance, involves a, a set P of uh, particles, an interval of, t of time, T, S, the function position, mass, internal forces, and external force. Of course, it is not a first order structure. And the same way, we can say about the quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics also involves a set of objects we call particles, a collection of Hilbert spaces, uh, self adjoint operators of the Hilbert spaces, unitary operation, uh, uh, unitary op operators, and a function to provide the probability. Then, of course, most uh, structures used in scientific theories are not first order theories. Yet, the convenience of transforming all of these in first order structures is disputable. Some say that it's possible to transform everything, every structure of higher order or order, to structures in the first order logic. But this is a difficult task. As Supi said, it's unquite and utterly laborious, according to Supis. The better, at least for the working scientists, is to consider higher order structures. And then we have a problem because we don't have a model theory for higher classes of structures. In general, given a class of a higher order, a class of higher order structures, this class cannot be axiomatizable uh, in general, in standard sense. That is, we cannot find a set of axioms which have such a class as its models and only those classes. Models then, in general, are not models in the sense of the, uh, in some language in task sense, but created from the same scientists' expertise. That is, they are, in general, mathematical models in science. Models will be, will be structured sets as mathematical models of some parts of reality empirical, in empirical theories or some of the idealized domain in mathematics. In my opinion, all models model some conceptualization of ours and not the reality itself. But this is a particular opinion, an idealist opinion. A group, for instance, is a structure G, a binary operation, a binary operation, a distinguished element, such that it postulates. And a group arose from the search for solution of polynomial equations, as we know from, from Galois. Hilbert spaces, for instance, it also arose from uh, functional analysis and later with von Neumann uh, in quantum mechanics. Classical particle mechanics is axiomatizing a certain particular domain of physics. So as quantum mechanics, orthodox quantum mechanics. That is, we are modeling certain domain of uh, our knowledge. But how we get to the models? That's the, the, the fundamental question. A little bit more on preparation. That, that is, in saying uh, how we get the models, we need some 
some definitions for, uh, to provide the, the way. Getting the models, I set theoretical structures that map, that map the object of study. Subset theoretical predicates may be a case which provide the models. To axiomatize a theory is to present a set of theoretical predicates. The predicates define the class of structures which obey the predicate. These are the models of the predicates, which can be seen as Bourbaki's species of structures. And in general, we cannot go the other way around. Given a class of mathematical structures, we need to find a set of axioms which have these structures as models and only these structures. There are necessary sufficient conditions only for first order structures, that is, invariance by isomorphisms and closer by the formation of a ultra product, but no for higher order structures. We don't have necessary and sufficient conditions for axiomatization. So we need to start with the postulates and look for the models of the postulates. But Howerson again considered and criticized this procedure. In the, uh, in the following structures. Start a first order, so to say, first order theory, T. Uh, agora, why, uh, why first order? I really don't know. We could use it here a higher order structure, for instance, classical particle mechanics. The important thing is that we can define then the class of models of T as those structures that sus satisfy the axiom of T. Then, Powerson says, throw a T away and keep just with the models. And he criticizes it. I, I agree with him. Then we can find the language L for which they are all the structures. But this cannot be acceptable at all because we cannot simply, simply forget that we start with a theory or with a language, with a set of postulates. And surely we would return precisely to that to what they had to your left, that is, to the axioms of the theory. Okay. What's the place of the models? Once you fix it, that we start with the postulates and find the structure, it comes the problem. Where does the structures live? In order to define models of T, we need to look to the needs of T, the needs of the theory, what the theory needs in order to specify its models. There are, first of all, mathematical needs. That is, the needs, the mathematical needs of T. Soups, uh, take a informal set theory or a model set theory, which despite being consistent, provides all, practically all uh, mathematics we need, but it, 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 it not, does not specify a particular theory. But take, for instance, T as orthodox quantum mechanics. In orthodox quantum mechanics, the quantum mechanics at all, make use of the unbound operators. Then if we use unbound operators, of course, we cannot use, as the meta-mathematics, solo by set theory. Why? Because the solo set theory, all operators on a Hilbert space are bounded. That is, it is disputable if you could develop quantum mechanics in a meta-mathematics like solo ones. Another example, if again, if T is quantum mechanics, it needs basis for the relevant Hilbert spaces. But then you cannot use as the meta mathematics, the models, the, the Locklin's permutations models of Zermelo Frank with atoms, where there may be vector spaces with no basis or vector spaces of basis of different cardinalities. This, this would collapse the formalism of quantum mechanics. And also, uh, uh, two very good uh, papers by Paul Benioff from 1976 shows that not all ZFC models are adequate to formulate quantum mechanics. That is, the role of the meta mathematics is quite important. We need to pay attention to it. And I, I, I mentioned also a philosophical discussion, for instance, Hilary Putnam's discussions about scientific realism is grounded on the law of Heinz-Schollen theorems, which are related to the mathematics we use in the case of first order set theory. That is, we need to pay attention to meta mathematics. Let's go. What then? I, I, I spoke about the mathematical needs of the theory, but uh, are there metaphysical needs too? I think so. We can start with a metaphysical view instead, put from evidence, from evidence, metaphysical ideas taken from evidence. That is, there are electrons, which are electrons, what are electrons, and so on. Not from the armchair, but from the physical evidence. That is, with a broad conception of the theories entities, 
For instance, a very general metaphysical claim, as Einstein postulated that the velocity of the light is the same in all uh, inertial reference frames. Then we can stay, start with the metaphysical presuppositions. Classical physics, for instance, arose from now the static conceptions of reality. The belief that the Euclidean geometry, geometry fits the world, that classical logic is the right logic, etc. In sustained metaphysics, we need to be to need to adapt the metamathematics. So that's the point. The metamathematics you know, is the metamathematics. Most scientific theories don't need more than a fragment of the Melo Frank with the axiom of choice. Since the models are simple sets, for instance, classical particle mechanics, so we don't use the full Zermelo Franco set theory, for instance, uh, the, uh, all, all the didactic shows and so But you take this case study where the need of different mathematics seems to be in order. Quantum mechanics apparently needs a different mathematics, meta mathematics. Let's have an example. Take a Mackey, well known axiomatic from 1963. We had two abstract sets, a set of observables and a set of states. Nothing is said about the system, that is the quantum objects. Apparently, their very nature must be grasped from the mathematics, and surely they are not like the objects described by classical physics. A market develops this quantum mechanics without speaking about quantum systems. We need to read the whole theory in order to refer something about the underlying ontology, if any. Okay. Another uh, very nice book about that is Max Yammer, well-known book, The Philosophy of Quantum Mechanics. In the first axiom, Yammer says that to every system, a very vague idea, corresponds a Hubert space and so, 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 so. And after that, nothing more is said about the systems. Again, the ontology is hidden. Okay, that is quantum mechanics. Are we speaking about what? That's the question I posed a few minutes ago to Christine. What, what, what uh, are you speaking about? I, I at least me, uh, feel uh, the lack of some discussion about ontology. We need to realize that, that there cannot be any differences, for instance, among uh, hydrogen atoms, oxygen atoms, among electrons, protons, and so on, respecting the quantum mechanics and chemistry, at least uh, until John Dalton. That is, we need to, re to recognize, to acknowledge that this, uh, the indiscernibility of, uh, of these elements. Then, this is a challenge to quantum mechanics, to the metamathematics of quantum mechanics. What do we find the formulations of quantum mechanics? Classical mathematics, where every object is distinct from any other, contrary to these acknowledged quantum facts. That is, all hydrogen atoms are perfectly alike, and so on. These are against, completely against standard mathematics. The same example comes from entangled states, nowhere there is no possibility to say which is which. Quantum statistics, already mentioned by Romy and Jonas, both the Einstein statistics and Fermi did, there is no individuality of the quanta. And the fundamental indistinguishability postulate, which says that the, the expectation value of the measure of a certain observable A for a system in the state psi is the same before and after a permutation given by a perma, an operator, per, permutation operator P. That is, invariance by permutations of course, without collapsing the quantifiers in the sense I already spoke, but we don't no, 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 no giving reference to, from now. All these facts, I, I, I say, uh, I believe that they are facts about quantum mechanics, that indiscernibility is a fundamental notion, so as contextuality, non-locality, superposition, and non-locality, for instance. Indiscernibility is a fundamental concept in quantum mechanics. All these facts, which are not speculations, suggest the absolute indistinguishability of some systems. Within, but within standard mathematics and logic, this can be only make it believe, but it doesn't capture the right idea of indistinguishability at all. We need a non-classical semantics. Because if you agree that semantics should reflect the, the targets of the logic, of the, of the theory. 
So, assuming a metaphysics, we have a metaphysics, for instance, of non individuals that the quantum objects, quantum system, don't have identity as in the classical objects. Let us assume the indiscernibility seriously. That is, quantum entities can be indiscernible and lack identity conviction. Then our semantics should agree with the classism of the logic or the theory, as said by the Costa, Buen, and Brazil. So, indiscernibility is, for, for me at least, a fundamental concept on a pair with contextuality, entanglement, non locality, and superposition, for instance. But without this notion, there is no, remember that there is no chemistry and no quantum physics, because we need that. The, uh, Dalton said that already in 1908. We cannot have the differences between two oxygen atoms or two hydrogen atoms and so on. He doesn't, of course, speak about electrons. Well, you can say, okay, you can uh, use a quantum, a Bohmian mechanic, because the Bohmian mechanic has positions as the, the uh, as providing identity and individuality for the particles. But remember that uh, in Bohmian mechanics, positions are given by hidden variables and hidden variables cannot be known, then we have something we cannot be, cannot access to them. Uh, I, I don't like very much this approach, so I leave it out. Okay, then I assume, I assume that indiscernibility is a primitive notion to be used instead of identity. This is my challenge with Otavio in general, because Otavio says that identity is fundamental. I don't believe that. I think, I think identity is can be dispensed with, and we can uh, use from the start just a weaker relation of indiscernibility or in undiscernibility instead. So we are becoming not compromised with the standard theory of identity, which implies that every object is an individual. So what we need? We need to find a semantics obeying these effects, the quantum facts. So out of standard set theories, which see the, the objects as individuals. And the, the Obianian, the, the Bomian, as I put again my preferred uh, analogy, the positions are described by hidden variables and cannot be known. We need to believe them. They are as the Florianopolis switches. No one has saw one of them, but they exist. These are the positions in Bomian mechanics. Since the collections of indiscernible systems cannot be seen as sets, that is sets of collections of distinct objects, then we need another an alternative. And the new, we need a new method mathematical for constructing the relevant structures enable no individuality. Look, I I I I am trying to, to argue that we need to pay attention to mathematics. And now I am giving a particular sample case. Uh, dealing with a metaphysics of non-individuals, then in this case, we, of course, I believe, strongly believe, that we need a different mathematics. That is, a mathematics constructed uh, so, so that the non-individuality can be put up, can be put in, in working. Then we can reintroduce the quantum objects of the discourse. Here, in classical particle mechanics, you can say in the second part, there is a set P of particles. And as I recall in Mackey, Mackey and in Yammer and so other, other approaches, quantum mechanics standard formulations doesn't practically doesn't, a formulation of quantum mechanics practically doesn't mean, doesn't speak about the systems we are dealing with. Then uh, Jonas Arendt and me formulate a, a different alternative formulator of uh, a quantum mechanics by introducing a set E soft states of, of states no, of quantum systems. Then we have on a part of classical particle mechanics a system, a set of systems, or better, a quasi set of systems because they should not have identity conditions, a, a set of systems. Hilbert spaces associated with systems, and then we give the axiomatics, which is more uh, feasible for describing uh, the, the standard quantum mechanics without the without omitting the speaking about uh, quantum systems as the standard formulations do. Then, this is not a set, but a quasi set, a collection of possible blind and discernible elements. 
I am a quasi certainly had a cardinal, both an ordinal, not an ordinal. And to have a quasi cardinal, to have a cardinal doesn't imply that the elements do have identity. This is shown by the theory. Okay, in this sense, this object, quantum objects, can be understood not as being individuals in the standard sense of entities with proper peculiar characteristics. If they are of the same kind, for instance, electrons, they all have the same characteristics precisely as quantum mechanics tries to teach us, us, to teach us. So, of course, you are really in need of a different math mathematics. Okay, then. So, different meta mathematics are needed either to fulfill the mathematical needs of the theory, that is, we need to end to support the metaphysical supposed interpretation. We need to think, I think, to pay attention to these both characteristics of the a scientific theory its mathematical needs and its metaphysical presuppositions. In a way, we need to consider the meta mathematics with care. Okay, then I hope you can think about these issues and I think I, I closed. Thank you so much. A short talk, <laughs> but perhaps the question. I have some references. The two papers by Paul Benioff, the works by the work by Hans Howerson, Yammer's book, Yak, etc. My book with Jonas, and uh, the Michael and Wright, which shows that all operators in the Hubert space are bounded, and of course, Ivan Frassen's the scientific image. Thank you so much. We have time for questions now. Thank you, Jonas. Thank you, Desio. Thank you. We have time for questions. I'll, I'll just stop sharing screen to check the yeah. chat. So everyone who wants to make a question, please write type Q in the chat. We have a first question by Otavio. Please, Otavio. Thanks, Desio. This is a very nice talk. And I, I, of course, I think you're raising a lot of very important issues. And I think they, they highlight um, ways in which a logical framework will, will, will lead certain, uh, the posing of certain important questions. Um, so, but let me ask you one thing. Um, do you think that there is a need to pay attention to the metamathematics when you're doing science, right? I'm thinking now about no, the no, just no, no, no. no. Right? In doing science, maybe not, okay. because the scientists don't know about foundations of mathematics and about logic and so on. They work. They use uh, the dispositives are uh, uh, the, the <laughs> things are at their disposals, and if not, they create them as Euler and several others create. Uh, several mathematical uh, stuff in order to realize in the, the Newton, for instance, created in differential integral calculus. No, mm -hmm. scientists don't. The scientists work like an engineer. They use the things they have, but this is a question for philosopher, for one interested in the foundations of science, of course. Right. So, and then how about when you move to high order logic, right? And at several points, you point out the limitations of um, of first order logic, and I think rightly so. But then the semantics of those the, of higher order logics are just a nightmare, right? So then, uh, then what do we do, right? Either we have a situation where we have a very nice meta mathematics for first order logics, yeah. but it turns out that they are not expressive enough. But to express what we want, then the mathematic meta mathematics becomes you know a nightmare. So how do we choose between those? No, I think it's a programmatic criteria, as you, uh, of course, I, I think you agree. Because we need to, to see, the, to look for the theory, theory by theory, in order to see its mathematical and metaphysical needs, in order to choose the right thing. Because as you said, the semantics in higher order logic is a nightmare. I agree with you, because it's not, uh, OK, we need to use uh, artifices, thinking semantics, and so on. 
and there is a challenge there. But I, I think, I don't know, no, I, I think you agree too, that we need to study, to look for the theory one by one in order to see what they need. That's the example I give. If I use, uh, for instance, standard quantum mechanics by means of Hilbert space, we need basis for Hilbert space. But then we cannot use a, a, a mathematics whatever. For instance, the locking permutation models, solid models, and so on, right. it's not possible. Then you need to choose the mathematics. Then mm -hmm. this is compromised because it may be not so, so much because if physics use a, a, a small part of standard mathematics. They use functional analysis and differential equations, which from the point of view of foundations are all given the standard set theory. But the metaphysics may be different. The metaphysics, for instance, the metaphysics are of no individuals which I defend. I believe that it demands a different and careful meta mathematics. But if I, you approach, as Jonas is only showing, uh, that the, there is also an interpretation of quantum objects as individuals, then perhaps you can use a standard set theory, why not? Then it's a, a, a kind of preference. Right. So, so if I can just one quick follow up on that, because. Go ahead. Yes. Um, it seems to me that sometimes you oscillate between two takes on mm. the, the status of those known individuals, right? Sure. I think sometimes you say things like quantum mechanics requires known individuals, right? Ah, no, uh, and, it's a way of speaking. No, no, no. Okay. A, a modulo a certain metaphysical interpretation. Ah, okay. All right. So it's, yeah, okay. Because you can, could choose a boom mechanics. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'm sorry for the you words, but uh, okay, you are right. Okay, I will try to correct me by me later <laughs> presentation because it is important. I'm not, yeah, not follow radical. Up. I am not radical. It <laughs> needs no, of course no. We cannot speak it this way in philosophy. This follow up enough. already Thanks. answered my question, so uh, let us pass to Chris. Oh. But yes, thank you, Otavio and Desio. Now, uh, Haoni just skipped his question, so we, we have now Chris. Please, Chris. Uh, I, I was wondering, Desio, what, what do you think? I, I was thinking of a kind of counterexample to <clears throat> what you're saying re related to classical mechanics, which was, of course, developed from the conceptual understanding of space and time from Descartes to New from the Greeks, then later on to Descartes. I, I'm, I'm just mentioning a few and, and then Newton mm -hmm. Newton developed infinitesimal calculus with, with Leibniz. And of course, I mean, they were also presupposing classical logic, Aristotelian classical logic and yeah, yeah, yeah. the entity uh, in terms uh, of existence, non-contradiction, identity, those principles which characterize basically uh, the notion of, of entity in, in, in classical mechanics. So, so what do you think about that? Uh, well, uh, I think I, I'm dealing with a more contemporary approach. It's not historical ones. Then I mean, uh, you should be able to account for 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 the history of physics, right? Yes, but uh, 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 the story of quantum mechanics, so to say, not the story to uh, to, uh, to going back to Descartes or from Aristotle or so on. Just take a, a standard formulation of quantum mechanics, which quantum mechanics teaches. Then standard quantum mechanics. What is what it says? It says some something we can accommodate in a metamathematical stuff. Not, I don't need to, to what, revise. What's standard quantum mechanics? What do you mean by standard ah, quantum mechanics? So no, no, no. For instance, uh, there are several uh, sort of uh, formulations. For instance, by path integrals and so on. But uh, if choose the, the preferred by the philosophers, Hilbert space formulas. Yeah, with the collapse postulate and the projection postulate or without it? Yeah, okay. I believe in it. with the collapse postulate. Why not? Yeah, I don't I know you don't. That's but an inconsistent formulation. Huh. You say, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I yeah, know I you, you, you defend that. But uh, I don't see any problem with the, co the, the collapse postulate. With the problem is the well, it turns the, the, the theory inconsistent. The theory cannot be linear and no, you didn't show it yet. Yeah. Yeah. Show that it is show that it, it is inconsistent. I didn't it see is, it, is, the it cannot be linear and non-linear at the same time. The theory, right? Which cannot be linear and non-linear. The evolution of Formal, mathematical formalism cannot be linear and non-linear at the same time. But it is, no, why simultaneous, Christ? 
the, the devolution is uh, by a linear differential equation. Then the 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 the, 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 the measurement makes the collapse. Yeah, this no, is no, no linear. Now no, now you are introducing something completely ad hoc. I did, I don't understand it. Sorry. You introduce a ad hoc postulate. Well, okay, okay. okay. I, I I let you I let you continue. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Chris. So now we have a question by Julio. Please, Julio. Hi, Professor Tessio. Thank Hi, you man. for the talk. Uh, I have a, a little question, maybe motivation question. Uh, nowadays, I, I, I am a mathematical trainee. So uh, uh, I, am I am learning philosophy. Uh, my question is, uh, let's just say scientists uh, are doing creative work with scientific theories and logicians and philosophers uh, do a rational rec recreation of the theory in some points with formal methods. Uh, do you believe in some point the formal methods help us with creative ideas? And if so, uh, uh, do the scientists uh, must care about formal methods in some point one day? Uh, I don't know. But, but, uh, perhaps, uh, thanks for the question, but perhaps uh, with the evolution of science, some of them at least will be interested in the formal aspects. But uh, 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 concerning mathematics, and I think it, it applies also for empirical science, I recall you a philosopher I like very much, Indra Lakatos. He says that in mathematics, in the, in the formal aspect, in the axiomatic aspects, there is no heuristics, there is no creativity, as you mentioned, because according to Lakatos, all the theorems are, in a certain sense, already listed in the axioms. The only, the, the, the only role of the scientist is to discover them, so to say, to derive them. But he says, outside the formal aspect, in the creative part of mathematics, then there is a heuristics. Then later, of course, you create, for instance, Euler, uh, Fourier, the, the, the heat transfer, all the theory of Fourier the theory. Then it was later accommodated within the differential integral calculus. So as other parts of algebra, for instance, Galois theory of uh, uh, groups, it was accommodated later in a kind of structure. Then this is a process of uh, uh, cleaning the theory in order to know the principles, to need the kind of inferences, to know, to know the kind of uh, uh, logic you are using for derivations and so on. This is a second step. I would like to say that it is a meta 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 study of the scientific theories. But of course, scientists don't work with that. Think a biologist, if he knows about the logic. No, no, it's impossible to, to require that a biologist study logic first in order to study evolution theory. He will not do his job. It's, it's a different kind of approach. But some they did some time. Sorry, maybe one day most scientists will be um, uh, we accord we will be agree with the, the the role of the formal methods. As Schrödinger, Heisenberg, Bohr, and Einstein, and so are great philosophers too. Thank it's you. It's a kind of time. Mm -hmm. Julio Desio. Now we have a follow-up uh, then by Otavio. Okay, Otavio. Uh, yeah, um, I think Julio raises a really interesting um, yeah, point. And one example, I think, where formal methods can actually be uh, helpful to scientific practice is with non-standard analysis. Um, so where you have an entire way of thinking about analysis yeah, 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 yeah. that could not even be thought of, uh, but by a, because of uh, formal methods, right? And quite interestingly, uh, you may say, yeah, but look, uh, what new mathematics was developed with non-standard analysis, right? Uh, and um, Ro Abraham Robinson actually proved a theorem 
about Hilbert spaces um, mm. using, you know, for infinite dimensional Hilbert spaces, um, using the dimensionality as a non-standard uh, number. Um, and and what, what's quite interesting, the moment that Paul Almos saw the proof, he immediately found a classical version, right, of the <laughs> result that you can obtain without real analysis, uh, non-standard analysis. So... So it's an interesting case where there is an in, a give and take of the role that formal methods may play in um, yeah. in, in actual mathematical practice in that case. And yes, I think this will fit in very nicely with Lakatos. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. I, I, I use it uh, too in, in classes to justify to my students, my job, of course, the, the, the importance of the formal maths by comparing it with uh, planning. Uh, in the first world war, the the pilots localized themselves uh, according to a river, according to a mountain, according to something uh, uh, more uh, uh, more easy to, to understand. But now we travel in the ten thousand meters of uh, height and in uh, in a in a, in a, in a, in a, in a storm. Then. What we have, we have the automatic pilot that is formal things in order to guide us. Mm -hmm. Then it depends. In some instances, maybe scientists will need to pay attention to formal methods in order when they, they go, for instance, in your case, in this non standard analysis, when things go to outside our standard commitments, standard uh, naive intuitions. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, maybe this is the answer. Uh, nice. You don't need a good, good question, of course. I would. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Otávio. Desu, now Raoni. Hi, Desu. Thank you for your talk. Always a pleasure to your lectures. Uh, let me come back to the, the question raised by Tris, because on your book with Jonas, the, the Ruthless book, you presented the formulation of quantum mechanics as if it was the quantum mechanics. As you well know, I am a, a critic of that. I don't think there is the quantum mechanics. And I, I, I stress that because you explicitly uh, formulated quantum mechanics via the supersedic predicate with uh, the, the, the collapse postulate. So I was wondering if... Uh, other formulations of quantum mechanics, other interpretations of quantum mechanics also depends or, or can be better understand, understood with the formulation of, on quasi-set theories. If Bohmian physical systems can be uh, coped with quasi-set theories, if Everettian quantum mechanics can be better understood if formulated by the quasi-set theories and so on and so forth. Thank you again. Okay, thank you for the question. Because my look, uh, Roni, Jonas and I presented a case study just to to show how uh, we can model some domain of of, of uh, empirical science by explicitly putting the set of objects or the quasi set of the quantum objects we are making reference to, as in classical particle mechanics, because the standard formulations by Hubert Space, don't. They mention as the Yammer said, to every quantum system, a Hubert space, but nothing more is okay. But if you don't agree with the collapse, okay, be happy because uh, lots of people don't don't agree with that. But but I cannot agree, agree or understand Everett approach and also Bohmian approach and so on. I, I love more or less uh, orthodox. I, I don't see problems. Uh, with the collapse, because I don't understand Christian uh, until uh, this moment, uh, the the Christian's uh, argument that it's inconsistent, because I don't see uh, the, the evolution is linear until it becomes non-linear. What's the problem? You are alive until you are dead. Do do, do mathematics know about subjects this year? Do, do mathematics uh, know when? Yes, yes. Uh, about, uh, they, they, about they, the mathematics. They, Perhaps they, I, I need to read more about your stuff because uh, you know to understand it. I am interested in that to see where if there is a contradiction, it will be fine to find it to, to, to make it explicit from the logical point of view. 
Maybe this is a, a, a challenge to us, to develop. Quite good. To make it explicit nice. to the skill set from the formal and the philosophical and physical points of view. We have a, we have a program, uh, as Otavio would say, we have a project. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Desu and Hauni. Christian wants a follow up or not? Okay, then, then I uh, I see that there are no more questions. I have a question, if I may. Oh, over. Okay. <laughs> because uh, thanks also for the talk. It was really, really interesting. And uh, you mentioned the importance of having our meta mathematics uh, have representing the metaphysical view that um, we are assuming, right? So basically, there, there is a background assumption that mathematics and formalism uh, represent certain metaphysical assumptions. So whatever are your metaphysical assumptions, there's a kind of, of, of a plan or, or an urge to make the metaphysics and the formalism coherent. Mm -hmm. and, and basically, the classical formalism would be assuming a very classical metaphysics of individuals and objects. Yeah, yeah. So, that's a kind of urge to people who don't believe in this kind of worldview to change their formalism. And so that, that would be the kind of even more basic assumption here. I would like to hear your comments on, on, on this. It's not merely changing the mathematics for the sake of uh, having our assumptions more explicit, but also to have them conforming to the metaphysics that we are assuming. Yes, that's the point that I, I made the reference. We need to see not only the mathematical needs, but also the metaphysical needs. That is the metaphysical assumptions. You need to pay attention to both. I agree with you. you, you I, I believe it. you cannot uh, give up uh, a metaphysical position, even in classical logic. When you say that uh, all centers are true or false, you are assuming a metaphysical position. And then metaphysics is, 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 is there. Uh, uh, in this case, uh, it will depend. We have uh, several alternatives. For instance, Christian's metaphysics or, or intensities and powers is a different one. It's an alternative. Maybe uh, it's interesting, of course. We have, can have others as individuals and no individuals. And you know, perhaps no objects as the structuralists prefer. There are no objects to give out, out objects and take just the structures. The problem for them is what's the structure? Because they intended to use set theoretical structures in order to use a quasi true and so on. And they cannot realize a, a, a structure of relations without the related. There is no such a development till now, as, as I am. Yeah, yeah, but then, the point okay. would be a, a bit more a bit more radical for them because yes, I, the I classical think logic we, yes, is, I think is we should committed not to objects. Be, yeah, then of people course. like Chris it and is. structural realists would have to change their formalism. Yeah, it's necessary to develop a, a formalism which copes with uh, the, their philosophical intuitions, which will be very fine, of course. I think we should not be radical. This is so, this is, I would have my preferences, you know which ones. But uh, of course, I'm not uh, uh, completely full, <laughs> just a little bit. But uh, I agree with the other approaches. For instance, as Christians, as far as I can understand them. No? Very nice. Then just a quick follow up. That, that would be something like uh, the, the end of the idea of topic neutrality for logic and mathematics, right? <laughs> sure. They are always relative to a topic. Notavia agrees, too. Okay. We all agree. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Desi. Okay, you thank more? you all for the questions and for the... We weekends. have more questions here. Please, anyone who wishes to make a question, please type Q okay. in the chat. We still have some more time if people we want have to make it. questions. Yeah, this is a point where we randomly select people to ask questions. <laughs> No, that's that's. Fine. We have a plan. Yes. We have a plan. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we know that we all agree about the questions we would ask in advance. <laughs> yeah, we look, we don't know the solutions. <laughs> <laughs> Problem that we already agree with a lot of the answers. Then. <laughs> 
good yeah. people. Then so that's just since I have you here. Has a question. So okay. let me ask you something uh, about bom bomia mechanics, mm -hmm. right? Because in a way, it is uh, uh, it is an intriguing theory, right? Because on the one hand, of course, Bohm would like it to be a rival theory to quantum mechanics. I think that's what he would like really to be a different theory, right? And I think yeah, because no, 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 no predictions could be obtained. I think it became just a rival interpretation, right? So now on the one hand, it has a lot of attractive features, right? It's as classically as you can get, right? And still uh, be, be quantum to some extent. On the other hand, it didn't pan out, right? In terms of offering novel empirical predictions. Um, so what, what are your take uh, on, on the on Bohmian mechanics? So do you think it's just uh, an interpretation um, mm. and uh, or it's more than that, it's a rival theory? And I ask you that for the following reason, because I, I see uh, quantum mechanics with known individuals as something similar right? Uh, not similar in the sense of being classical, it's not, right? But similar in the sense that it gives us a very different picture about how the way the world would be if uh, if the, if uh, no quantum mechanics, quantum mechanics were true, mm -hmm. right? So it, it forces us to rethink our metaphysics from the ground up in a, in a fairly dramatic way, um, right? So just as Bohmian mechanics does the opposite. You'd say, look, quantum mechanics is here, but we don't have to rethink our metaphysics. It basically, things are just as we thought they were, so we are all okay. So, so they are dual in this sense, dual with square no. codes. It's interesting. This is an interesting point, this, this duality. But Bohmian mechanics, as far as I understood it, is a different quantum mechanics. It's a different thing, because it has another presuppositions. For instance, the pilot wave. Right. Something no one can explain precisely what is it. But the metaphysics, I think, it's uh, similar to classical one because they are individuals, the, the particles are individuals, the particles and the waves, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. Then, but I would put it as a different theory, but uh, maybe I am suspected to say precisely this. But the analogy with quantum, the quantum uh, the metaphysics of known individuals, maybe it's it's similar as you as you say, because you are proposing some. But I don't think that Otavio, it's something different. Mm -hmm. It's that what quantum mechanics teaches us, what chemistry teaches us, that there cannot be differences between two hydrogen atoms. Mm -hmm. If not, if you have a difference. You will not recover the, the, the table of elements, for instance. It's impossible to apply uh, chemical uh, reactions if there are differences between two oxygen atoms and so on. Chemistry breaks out. Then right. this is, according to me, what quantum mechanics is suggesting us. We should strongly believe that as far as it is fear, that is uh, works, save the appearances, then we must be compromises with no individuals. That's my problem, but I agree with the others. Mm -hmm. Right. So then if you think that way, then it's on you now to work out an entire metaphysics, right, for non-individuals. So that you can say, okay. look, if that's the way the world is, well, we now need to tell a story, right? How come that tables yes, uh, that look like individuals and... And this is what was Christian's uh, first uh, question in another talk. What's an electron? I think mm -hmm. no one knows. We need to look the, to the theories. The electrons are those things postulated by physical laws. A certain mass, a certain electric charge, certain values of spin, and so on, so on, so on. Mm -hmm. These are electrons. The protons are similar things, and neutrons are similar things. And uh, oh, physicists say that all electrons are indiscernible, identical in this jargon. I, I, I don't know, because sometimes you can separate an electron, isolate them. Or, 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 or a certain quanta, for instance, Priscilla, has delta to Priscilla, positron. Uh, Wineland and, and also did uh, work in this direction, but they are isolated. They have a peculiar individuality conditions because they are in that 
uh, trap in that place in that time and so on. But it does not make them individuals because individuals, uh, uh, you agree because you wrote that, need to be reinterpreted as such in other situations. Mm -hmm. That's right. It lacks. The quantum lacks, lacks this fundamental property. That is, we cannot know anymore which is which. The which electron gained energy when ionize an helium atom in order to obtain uh, ion. Which one is gained energy? This not, does not make sense. In this sense, that is, in the sensibility, is more, more concerned to, to the incapacity to, to say which is which. Maybe this is the, the right direction for understanding the sensibility. I cannot say anymore which is which. Then they are indiscernible. I doubt I can imagine them in my mind as things of some kind, maybe field excitations, maybe uh, uh, some uh, invariants by groups. Uh, I don't know, but they these things are the things I'm speaking about, and I think they are better viewed as no individual, but it's my my right. relief. Thank you. I think Andre <laughs> has a, a follow up. Yes, we, we have a follow up. Thank you, Target. Now, Andre, please. Yeah, my question uh, relates to what Otavio said about okay, with the metaphysics of non individuals, we need to build up uh, our objects of, yeah, of our uh, usual objects from that. But what I understand of Professor Desius' uh, proposal is just well, I, I want I, I would like a clarification if that's what a, it's exactly Professor Dash's project that is just to clarify um, what standard quantum mechanics already tells us, you know, to understand formally what is there of metaphysics and not necessarily to have a, me, a more broad metaphysical project to really take quantum mechanics as a fundamental theory and then build standard objects from that. And we, we could have quantum mechanics as a very localized theory about microscopic objects and not as a a, reduc a reductive theory right about what that tells us what the word is fundamentally. But uh, I, I'm just not sure and I would like this clarification. No, uh, I think, okay, I agree with you. Uh, quantum mechanics is trying to tell us something. Um, it depends on the way you read quantum mechanics. There are lots of readings of it. My reading is in agreement of a different ontology. Um, I'm not alone. For instance, uh, Jean-Marc Levy Leblon, uh, uh, a French physicist, said that he preferred to call these entities quantums, a word, as far as I know, uh, goes back to Mario Bung. That is another kind of entity, uh, something different, completely different. We cannot even, even imagine what they are because you don't have the canons to understand, because usually you associate the word with the distinct objects, uh, with identity, you are different from any other of us, and so on. This is the classical stance, but uh, I don't believe it, in, at least in quantum. I don't know about the, the rest. Something more? Thank you, Andre. Do, do we have some more questions? This uh, finding there no. Good. Uh, okay, then I thank uh, you so much for the questions, and I hope you have a plan as Otago wrote uh, in order to 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 continue the discussion and to involve more people in these discussions about uh, ontology, metaphysics, and formalisms. Right. Not only in quantum mechanics, but in general. Thank you, Jonas. Thank, thank you. you, thank you Thank you. Thanks everyone. a lot. Yeah, this will yeah. never end. <laughs> <laughs> so all right. We, we, we okay, meet again see you afternoon. Two o'clock. Very soon. Two o'clock. Two o'clock. That's okay. right. That's the schedule. Hi, Patricia. How are you? Patricia.